2020. Please silence all electronic devices as a courtesy to those in attendance. Thank you. Call to order. Invocation. Let us pray. Lord, watch over this meeting as we do the city's business. Guide us in the right direction as we make important decisions. Help us make Lamore an even better place to live. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Council Member Lyons? Here. Council Member Scaldi? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Plord? Present. Mayor Neal? Thank you. Public comment. Public comment will be in accordance with the attached policy. We're in the COVID-19 crisis right now, so. Um, this time is reserved for members of the audience to address the city council on items of, on items of interest that are not on the agenda and are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. It is recommended that speakers limit their comments to three minutes each. And it is requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. The council is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda. Prior to addressing the council, any handouts for council will be provided to the city clerk for distribution to the council and appropriate staff. Do we have any uh, submitted public comments? So we have one and it is from Jennifer Solis, 757 Redwood Lane. And it reads, this year has been a pivotal time for leaders. I wanted to invite you and any and all leaders to the Emerging Leader Summit on August 29th from 8.30 to 12.30 p.m. Here's some wording from the host. If you want to increase your influence, you'll invest in your abilities. Join Pastor Andrew Cromwell and Dr. Frank DiMazio as they lead us in a time of shaping our leadership skills. We are all on some sort of team, be it family, work, or friendships. Let's get together. Let's get better at what God has called us to do. Take this generation to the next level. I've attended this local leadership gathering annually, and I can attest you'll feel on fire, ready to conquer the world by the time it's over. And she provided the link to anyone who's interested. And next, in case you are not on nextdoor.com, I wanted to make you aware of a resident posting their frustration with the water price increase. This opened up a wide range of residents' complaints. There were over 120 comments, and many were negatively directed at the city council, the city manager, and other city employees. I, spend, I spent time daily replying to keep up and to help bring truth to the flurry of misinformation circulating. There are residents each of you on the city council represents. They want to be heard, they want your empathy, and they want to hear directly from you. When you take the time to listen, to point to the facts, they begin to understand. My Facebook Live Q&A with Nathan was yesterday as scheduled. I thought this was perfect timing. Nathan and Marissa stayed late to take the time to address the comments and wrong information. They were amazing. Nathan even shared his cell phone number with those listening, which impressed me and further showed his dedication to listen and to improve the city I love. In under an hour, I saw prior negative comments change to comments like, knowledge is power, thanks for clarifying this. The city is not hiding anything or being malicious. Thank you for this Q&A. I love my town and we need to come together. I know some believe if you ignore the negative comments, they go away, but I urge those to look at the history of communication and the city's reputation. 
they'll see this isn't true. Ignoring voices only dismisses their perceptions and potentially valid concerns and accidentally alienates the very ones we are trying to so desperately hard to serve. Time doesn't heal frustration. Empathy and truth does. Waiting into the mess changes residents from enemies to allies. I've seen this repeatedly in the past two months. This translates to less negative comments circulating, less time wasted on misinformation, and less time fielding complaints. When you don't feel defeated by the barrage of neg negativity, this opens up minds to find creative solutions to problems with problems our city is facing. This allows everyone serving this city to have more time to work on the good, and this gets more people involved and willing to help. Thanks for serving our city. I urge you to take the time to wade into the mess, to listen and respond timely, and to share your valuable knowledge, even after your time and those seats are done. Jennifer Solis. Thank you. Okay, the uh, the mayor pro tem kind of made a little error and jumped onto the public comment a little too early, and so I have it from the from the city attorney that uh, should have been added before the council uh, public comment was no closed session report. So that and uh, agenda approval additions and or deletions. Are we going to? Nothing to, nothing right nothing now? to add. Okay, no. thank you. So then we'll press on to section one, ceremonial presentations. We have no ceremonial presentations. Department and city manager report section two, two dash one, department and city manager reports. Good evening, mayor and council members. We have Frank Rivera, our public works director this evening. Good evening, mayor pro tem and council members. Um, at the request of the city, um, the city contracted or hired uh, uh, Kings County Association of Government to, to perform a, uh, to go out and, and uh, seek a consultant to go out and, and rate all of the streets, city streets and county roads uh, throughout the county. Uh, they, they actually uh, hired a company called NCE. Uh, they were selected and they recently finalized um, the rating of all the streets in the county. And so in September, we will be bringing a study session, uh, bringing in detail uh, of what the, the report uh, compiled. I'm happy to say that our overall index is, 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 is great. Um, some of the, uh, the key points that we brought up is um, the city of Lemoore's network payment condition index uh, is at a 71. And the rating is uh, from one to 100, zero being worse and 100 being the best. A 71 is considered to be very good. Um, at 71, the city of Lemoore is the second highest within the agencies in the county and is above the 2018 statewide average of 65. Cork can beat us by one point. So anyway, it's good news, but in September, we'll bring you a more thorough study and talk more about the, about the report. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> I believe the police chief has an update too. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem Plurid and council members. I just want to provide you guys with an update in regards to uh, some uptick in crime that we're seeing and going to have to address uh, and get, get on it. Um, as you know, uh, the state enacted two projects, Project Room Key and Project Hope. Project Room Key uh, provides for housing, uh, specifically hotel rooms for homeless people that would otherwise have nowhere to go to either wait out this pandemic or to shelter because they're um, under quarantine because they're, they're positive for it. Project Hope is uh, another project to alleviate, I guess, some of the overcrowding issues inside the prisons uh, to create some distance for the inmates and to otherwise get those individuals who are being released from the prison system 
again, a place to stay, uh, to stay like a hotel room. Currently, we have one hotel taking uh, voluntary. Um, uh, they have elected to um, go along with this, these two programs and have opened up their hotel for these projects. Um, April 9th was the start of Project uh, Roomkey. April 12th or April 13th, they started releasing inmates. Since then, we've had 384 calls for service at the Travel Lodge. Over 20 arrests that are just out of the Travel Lodge. When I ran the report, I didn't include anybody that we caught coming away from there or any traffic stops going into or from there. Um, it's actually 20 cases, not arrests. Uh, we're probably closer to around 40 arrests at this point. Uh, we had surveillance uh, over this last weekend. Uh, for about 40 hours, they witnessed approximately 60 to 7 hand-to-hand -hand drug transactions and counted 100 plus cars coming in and out of the parking lot uh, with a, an additional 30 subjects walking to and from, which we would consider short stay traffic, essentially to purchase their drugs uh, and leave. Um, <clears throat> these arrests are mainly drug arrests of kind of, I mean, if, if there is a fortunate side, it, it's, it's drug related, but we are seeing, um, obviously when they're under the influence of methamphetamine, cocaine, heroin, uh, we do get some violent uh, calls over there. We had, we responded to a subject uh, in the parking lot with um, a knife, brandishing a knife. Uh, luckily that turned out okay for us and he was taken into custody and booked in a jail for being under the influence as well as brandishing a knife. Um, but we've taken several guns off the street now, uh, ammunition, and I could go through a laundry list, uh, but I won't take up too much more of your time. Uh, we do have uh, a plan moving forward and uh, I hope uh, to come back to you with some more successful news. Do you know if these programs have an expiration date or are they I don't. Okay. I don't. At least they're all at one location. You don't have to travel all over town to pick them up. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we're going to see, uh, you know, with drug traffic, uh, we're going to see an uptick in property crimes because they have to pay for their habits somehow. And so we will address it uh, as needed. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. That's all? Okay. Consent calendar. Section three. Items considered routine in nature are placed on the consent calendar. They're, they will be considered and voted upon in one vote as one item unless the council member or a member of the public requests individual consideration. <clears throat> three dash one approval minutes, regular meeting. July 21, 2020. 3-2, approval declared public nuisance, declaring public nuisance and routine pub, and ordering public hearing regarding weed abatement, resolution 2020-28. 3-3, approval amendment of Lamore planning, appointment of Lamore planning commissioner. 3-4, approval, COVID-19 Small Business Assistance Program. 3-5, approval, purchase of two, si two new side loading refuse trucks. 3-6, approval, bid award, well 10, pump purchase and installation. Does a council member wish to pull any item? Has there been a request from the public to pull any item? 3-5, purchase of two, si two new side loading refuse trucks. So, this, uh, 
this will be discussed and uh, let's have a vote on uh, on uh, items 3-1 through 3-4 and 3-6. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion by Council Member Lyons. Second by Council Member Scaldi. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Council Member Lyons. Aye. Council Member Scaldi. Aye. And I vote aye. That uh, brings us to 3-5. Would you like to discuss that or? Yes, I just checked my email and I had a um, email from a resident. So I'm gonna read it into the record. And it reads, are the two new trucks absolutely necessary? Are current city services seriously affected by not having these two trucks? Are these two new trucks replacing two existing trucks? If yes, is only $400,000 in the approved asset replacement budget for fiscal year 2021. The staff report said the refuse department has budgeted 700,000 for new refuse vehicles in fiscal year 2021. What line item budget is the remainder coming from? Is it really a fiscally responsible decision to purchase two refuse vehicles at a tune of 600,000 when the city's current fiscal year budget is in the red? Although it may not be ideal to continually fix the older vehicles, it is most definitely less expensive and the city has obviously been able to maintain refuse services. Thank you. Janie Venegas, resident, District B resident. Thank you. Good evening, council. Um, <clears throat> Nathan Olson, city manager. Um, these trucks are coming out of an enterprise account and this was all part of the refuse rate study that went through and we delayed the implementation of the increases till July 1. These are older vehicles that are spending a lot of time in the shop and it's causing undue overtime to get the routes picked up as we have uh, trucks in the shop repeatedly. This was explained um, throughout the study that we brought forth when we passed the rate increase. So these are replacement vehicles to get us back on pace to be able to maintain maintain services. So these in no way affect the general fund whatsoever. This is an enterprise account expense and they are accounted for in the rate study. Thank you. I remember sitting in a, a meeting where it was proposed that we would be buying trucks to replace mm -hmm. trucks that were wearing out mm -hmm. and it would be cheaper to replace them than to repair them or keep repairing them. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, that's the, the reason we're buying the trucks and it's a good question from the public because they're not a, they don't always attend all these meetings and, and know this so that's a good question from the public and I would unless there's a more discussion I'd entertain a motion to approve the purchase I, I, I would like to uh, make a motion to approve 3-5 okay second Motion by Council Member Scaldi, second by Council Member Lyons. Any discussion on the motion? Negative. Hearing none. Uh, Council Member Scaldi. Aye. Council Member Lyons. Aye. And I vote aye. Three five is approved. Thank you. That brings us to public hearing section four, four one. Public hearing, introduction, and first reading ordinance 2020 dash. 08 amending section 4-8-4 c12 of the Lamore municipal code relating to the relating to the distance within a school daycare center or youth center that a licensed commercial cannabis operation may not be located Oops. do you want me to do it nathan Okay. You want to take that? I will. Okay. So before you tonight um, is a proposed amendment to section 4-8-4C12 of the Lamore Municipal Code. Um, the purpose for this amendment and the recommendation from staff has to do with, one moment. It 
how cumbersome it becomes with your cannabis businesses um, and then the location of the splash pad and this and the skate park and in working with those distances and the businesses coming into Lemoore. The proposed language um, change to the ordinance isn't as what was posted with the agenda last week. The proposed language actually states um, that the the um, distance will still be 600 feet, but that can be changed um, if it's otherwise approved by the city police chief. And so that's the main amendment, main and only amendment to this, um, is, is this the ordinance one? section. Correct. It was handed out and then I believe it was posted it for the public. Says 100 feet on this. We'll make that change. We'll make sure it says the 600 feet. I think you're looking at one of the warehouses. So the only change is the uh, we're going to keep it 600 feet at the discretion of the chief of police. There there may be reductions for something closer, basically. Correct. Yeah, there can be reductions or even um, distances further than the 600 feet. It will be at his discretion. So a minor change to the municipal code just to make things easier for everybody. Correct, to be a little bit more business we're, friendly. We're, we're not adding any more marijuana dispensaries, so it basically relates to the ones that we have currently. So, uh, and we're not going to have any until our population gets over 35,000. And that, you know, we don't know what the census is going to bring us this next time. So, any discussion on the ordinance? Yeah, I, I got a bunch of. I got a couple phone calls or about the this. resolution. I'm sorry. Resolution. And uh, the one of the things that was mentioned to me was a conditional use permit. And I would also like to say that, you know, that was discussed and uh, I, th I feel like this is the best way moving forward. The, the proposed new reading. No, I, I would agree with, with council member Lyons and that the hundred feet is, is kind of scary, especially as a educator at a school. And uh, I have nothing but utmost confidence in, in, in Chief Kendall or whoever's going to come down the line after Chief Kendall. Hopefully he stays forever. But um, in, in their professional opinion of, of, of how close a, a cannabis dispensary can be to a given school, daycare center, or youth center. So I, I would have no objection. Like I said, I, I think he's got the best interest of the city in mind and, and obviously the law enforcement side. Uh, to take care of the citizens. Okay, then I'll, this is a public hearing, so I'm going to open up the to, to the public for public hearing. Do we have any input from the public uh, on this item? I did not receive any comments from the public on 4-1. Thank you. Thank you. And so... I'll close the public hearing. The uh, I think we'll just uh, we've discussed it, and uh, I think the council members are kind of uh, you know self-evident. The city they have a lot of trust in our chief of police, and uh, and I'm sure he wouldn't do anything without without the best interest of the city of Lemoore in, in, in mind. So uh, I'll open it up for a motion. I'm to motion. approve ordinance 2020-08. I'll a motion to approve ordinance dash or 2020-08. And can I clarify that that motion council would be a motion to introduce and waive the first reading of this ordinance? Yes, that too. Very good. Now the I'll second that. Okay. Uh, just for clarification or, or, you know, for discussion on the motion, yes. the current uh, ordinance that's on online right now is going to be slightly modified to include the language that we were discussed tonight. That's correct. So uh, for those that are online watching, check it out tomorrow morning. You'll see a change. And we'll be approving this again at our next meeting for the second reading. So um, a motion by Councilmember Lyons, second by Councilmember Scaldi. Uh, do I have a... Aye. From Councilmember Lyons, Councilmember Scaldi. Aye. And I vote aye. 
motion <coughs> is approved. Our last item deals with, ooh, 5-1, subject resolution and agreement rescinding this, uh, I just have to put my glasses on. Rescinding disposition and development DDA and First Amendment to the DDA between the City of Lemoore City and KKAL LP and two, approval of an ordinance of, of an option to KKAL LP to purchase approximately nine acres of city property and three, approval of an addendum to mitigated negative declaration dated November 6, 2018 to allow consideration of a future project development agreement, PDA, and cannabis regulatory permit between the city and NHC Lamore LLC, NHC. So we have uh, got a mouthful there. Yeah. Nathan, did you want me to do this one? Yeah, okay. So, um, Council, before you tonight is a resolution with many items in it. Um, just to give a little bit of history on this um, matter, on December 4th, 2019, you previously approved a disposition and development agreement with KCAL for the approximate 83.5 acres um, and an initial study slash mitigated negative deck. The proposed development project included the conveyance of those acreage to KCAL LP to allow for construction of manufacturing and distribution in a warehouse center um, that would have been approximately 1 million square feet of building space um, with a related secondary economic benefit to the city. Um, there was a first amendment to that DDA on March 17th of this year to exchange 24 of the 83.5 acres to allow the city to use for storm drainage purposes. Um, since that time, the city has been approached by NHC Lamore LLC to develop that project for a less intense land use purpose. Predominantly, it will be agriculture, um, then the manufacturing distribution and the warehouse uses um, as proposed by that previous development agreement. Um, such uses are consistent with the addendum to the initial study in the mitigated NEG deck. So the parties to all of this, so KCAL, NHC, um, and the city, um, desire to rescind that first development agreement with KCAL and the amendment um, consistent with Exhibit A to this resolution with an option to purchase nine acres of the city property um, that's further defined. For one dollar upon the submission of a developmental proposal, development proposal that's been approved consistent with CEQA and applicable law. Um, NHC would assume all obligations under this new PDA consistent with Exhibit C and they would be in essence buying out KCAL for $1.7 million, um, thereby reducing the obligation of, eliminating the obligation of the city to put in that underlying infrastructure to the tune of about $10 million. Um, okay, so 10.5 million, so it's saving the city a significant amount of money. Um, so part of this resolution contains the actual um, findings regarding the um, lesser impact by a project from NHC. Um, you're also with this resolution, you would be rescinding that development agreement and the First Amendment with KCAL. You would also extend that option to KCAL for the purchase of that nine acres for the one dollar. Um, also, as part of your packet was um, another development agreement with NHC that will come back at the next the first meeting in September. So that is not on your plate for consideration tonight. So staff is recommending that council um, approve this resolution and we're available for any questions. Any questions? So basically the city right now is on the hook for 10 and a half million to put in the infrastructure on that 80 plus acres yes. out there. Correct. So the infrastructure and then there was also um, had the city not put that in. There's um, a four million dollar um, penalty 
in that agreement between okay. KCAL and the city? I think it's going to put to use some nine acres of land that are currently empty right now. And uh, I think that's an important factor. And, and uh, if we can put that land to good use, we might be able to generate some, some retail sales off of that. No, I, I, and, uh, you know, if, you know, a dollar for that piece of property, if that could be negotiated higher, that would be a plus. But I think it's a win-win right now for the city if we can go with this deal because uh, it gets us out from under liability. And yeah. uh, I, think, I think they're getting a good deal and we're getting a good deal. So I'll open it up for discussion or a motion. And if there were any public comments on this resolution yeah. as well. Might just do well. Do we have any public comment? We haven't received any? I did not receive any public comments for 5-1. Okay, thank you. So I'll open it up for a motion. So how do you want me to motion this? Uh, it would be a motion to approve the resolution and by that approval, you're approving all of the actions set forth in the resolution. Okay. I make a motion to approve by 5-1. Is that good enough? That'll do it. That's clear enough for the record. Motion from, uh, a motion from Council Member Lyons. Second. Second from Council Member Scaldi. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Council Member Lyons. Aye. Council Member Scaldi. Aye. And I vote aye, motion passes. That concludes our business. Uh, City Council reports are next and request to uh, Council Member Lyons, do you have anything to uh, discuss or report? No, I I don't have anything to report in right now. Oh, wait a minute. The census lady was walking my neighborhood today. If you haven't been counted or whatever, you know, call the census, be counted. That's important. Um, I'm trying to look back. No, I, I have a... Uh, Aging commission meeting coming up here pretty soon, but no, I have nothing else. Council member Scaldi. Um, I, I really don't have uh, much either, but uh, I'd like to thank PD and everything they do. Um, and that was kind of eye opening about the, uh, can key, I ask the you two a programs. Can I ask you, a question? you can, you can ask me a question. Has has the school year start this year different from last year? Absolutely. I thought that. It, it, it's a completely different beast, but uh, just cool. like anything COVID-related, you work through the problems and then try and get as much good of it, out of it as possible. Um, but um, thank, thanks, everybody, for showing up. Um, thank those people for throwing their uh, hats and our names in the hat to uh, be up here next year. Um, Good luck with that, and everybody take care. Okay. Uh, just throw out a couple of facts. I was appointed a year ago on the second meeting in August, so I guess this is my one-year anniversary. And I, I, I was hoping that we'd have a, a, a good city council doing city business, and it's, uh, you know, I, have, I wasn't disappointed. We've, we've had a good year. So I want to thank the council members for, for working hard and, and getting things done. Um, and another something for public works, a little information. Wake him up back there. <laughs> just, just for information, Kings County is bigger than the state of Rhode Island. Has more mi square miles in, in, in uh, Kings County. So when somebody does a survey on roads, they do a lot of roads. But there's a, you know, square miles is different than road miles, but it's still a big area. <laughs> so uh, I, I did attend the uh, South San Joaquin Division of the Lico California Cities meeting online last week, and uh, uh, there was some interesting discussion about re uh, reporting on, uh, on COVID money that was uh, given from the state. Uh, we were supposed to receive one-sixth of the money, and I checked with Judy, and we did receive one-sixth of the money. So that'll be going, you know, 
you know, it'll have to be reported in some manner back to the state and where it goes and how it's used. So I'm sure it'll be going in, in uh, everything that's approved by the state. Uh, other than that, it was, a, it was an interesting meeting. It lasted about an hour. I have a policy meeting uh, on Friday with the uh, South Fork Kings Groundwater Sustainability Agency. I'm on the policy committee with uh, Joe Neves, so I'm looking forward to that. Other than that, uh, I don't have anything else to report. That concludes our business tonight, and we're, we're adjourned until September the 1st at 730.